Welcome to You Don't Know Ball. Today, we are going to be ranking the top 10 coaches in the NFL. As always, if you don't know ball and want to know ball, be sure to subscribe. Leave a like. Let us know in the comments who you think is the best coach in the NFL. Dobbs, who do we have at number 10? All right, at number 10, Hunter. I'm preparing for the controversy already on this one. But we have Dan Campbell. And look, you know what? Like, again, just address it for what it's going to be. Everybody's going to say, Dan Campbell in the top 10. He's only really had, you know, two good years, one really good year as a coach. How exactly, right, are we going to have him in the top 10 list? Well, hear me out. I think my thing is, the biggest thing is that you would agree with too, is that the quick turnaround of a franchise that has been just so deprived of anything positive for such a long time. You know, when you can come in and really be the culture setter, the culture changer that Dan Campbell has been, I think that that's kind of really the big solidifying factor. And as we say, look, you know, the Lions were quite literally, you know, and and this is where it gets dicey is you could definitely put these decisions back on him. But You know, they're a couple risky decisions away from being a team that lands themselves in the Super Bowl this year and potentially wins the Super Bowl. So with all that considered, I would have felt like it's pretty criminal to leave Dan Campbell off the top, you know, the top 10 list. What are you thinking here, Hunter? Well, I mean, I'm willing to argue that you could probably put him as high as seven, depending on how you want to look at it. I think in terms of a motivator and getting the most out of his players, He is definitely one of the top in the league, and he has accomplished more than some some people in in front of him. So I, I, you know, on our list. So I, in terms of what he's accomplished and how his players respond, I could argue him being higher. But in terms of what he is as a football mind compared to some of these other coaches, if you were to take away like certain, you know, um. I don't know how, how how I want to put it, but basically what I'm saying is if we're going off football minds, yeah, top 10, like or not top 10, but if we're going off everything he offers as a coach, he's definitely top 10. Yeah, I think that exactly. That, that's the best way you could say it, right? Moving in to number nine, Dobbs, who do we have? All right, number nine. We have, and again, you know what? This is this is the controversial part of the list. I think we're going to get much, we're going to get less and less controversial as we go down the list here. But at number nine, got Zach Taylor, and you know again, very similar to Dan Campbell. You know, people are screaming those first two years. You know, without Joe Burrow, look what happened. You know, two and fourteen, four and eleven. He's a terrible coach. He needs the quarterback. Okay, you know what? I think you say for a lot of coaches, it's pretty clear. A lot of coaches, no matter who you are. Again, keyword a lot, not all, but a lot of coaches, you need your quarterback. And once he's gotten his quarterback, 10 and 7, 12 and 4, 9 and 8. On top of that, a Super Bowl appearance where, again, they are literally a few plays away from being Super Bowl champions. I think, you know, when you pair all that together already, and again, coming to a team like the Bengals that had to have a huge culture switch, very big transformation, he's done that and he's been the catalyst leading that transformation. So very similar to Dan Campbell. I would have felt like it's wrong to leave him off the top 10 coaches list for what he's done in the short tenure that he's been there. I mean, he's been to AFC championships. He's been to a Super Bowl. And the reality is, I think on this list, Zach Taylor is probably the least talked about. I think the Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow kind of overshadows what they have been able to accomplish in Cincinnati. And when Joe Burrow is healthy, they are one of the best teams in the NFL consistently. And that goes with coaching. Zach Zach Taylor has been one of the better coaches in the league for quite a while now. And I think he has earned a spot on this list in the top 10. Absolutely. Moving into number eight, we have Sean McDermott, the head coach of the Buffalo Bills. And I think, you know, Sean McDermott, again, here, so like I said, we're going to get less and less controversial. You know, how could you argue to me Sean McDermott is not a top 10 coach in the league, right? You know, in the seven-year tenure, we have nine and seven, six and 10, which is the, really the only blunder year he has. Then back to 10 and six, 13 and three, 11 and six, 13 and three, 11 and six. Again, though, you know, he's had a fantastic regular season record turning around the Bills who, again, you know, another one of those franchises, a very tough history, to say the least. 
you know, you're coming in and having to change an identity of a team where it's going to be tougher to change than perhaps another team's identity that already has had more success in the past and in a more marketable area. But he's coming there and made them very successful, which is very applaudable. I think, though, what, what takes away from him, you know, versus the guys we have higher on the list, per se, is that Sean McDermott, unfortunately, has not shown that he has the, uh, you know, the juice, per se, to get it done in the postseason when it really matters. The game plan he's put together has never really been, you know, the best when it needs to be the best. And I think for that reason is why I don't have him higher, but you can't argue his accolades. You can't argue what he's done to the city of Buffalo and helping bring the bills to be a perennial contender. So with all that said, you know, having him here at number eight on the list, I think I'm pretty comfortable with that Hunter. I think my thing with McDermott is I think a lot of people are too quick to put certain coaches on the hot seat because they're not getting it done. Like he has been relatively successful in Buffalo, obviously they have the second best quarterback in football, which is Josh Allen. Based on a lot of people's opinion, I would probably put him up there. I would put him there as well. But I think when you start to, I I know Diggs has his issues and they move him, right? But I feel like once you move a player like that and you start to rebuild a little bit, if you are not able to maintain a certain level of success, it's kind of like, okay, well, you fired the OC, you moved a star player. These are big moves because at that point, to me, you're not not scapegoating, but you're trying to say, well, this isn't working. This isn't working with them. And then it's like, okay, well, we moved these guys, we fired this guy, and if it's still not working, it's going to point back to you. No, absolutely. That's definitely where things stand with Sean McDermott as of right now. It's kind of like, you know... He's got to make something big happen over these next couple of years, I would say. Or else if you're the Bills, yeah, you're going to start looking in another direction because like we say, it's just the way the NFL works. It's not fair, but results dictate everything. And if you're not getting that top result, we got to start looking elsewhere, right? Moving in to number seven, I have a slash here. There's a coach I want to put here. So who do you have at seven, Dobbs? All right, so I have Kevin Stefanski right here. And you know what? My, my explanation for this is actually rather short, right? Because he hasn't had a very long head coaching career, right? We only have four years of experience. However, in those four years, we got the two-time AP coach of the year. And it's funny because it's the first and the last season where he's won coach of the year. And the two years that were in between were not, I don't even want to say mediocre seasons because the quarterback situation was just rather, rather dire, right? I mean, it's really the best way you can put it. So eight, nine, and then seven and 10 in between. But We've seen, and again, back to kind of like we were saying about these other coaches earlier on this list. You know, when you come to a team that is in desperate need of a complete culture switch, especially like the Browns, I mean, with with some of the poorest, you know, unfortunately history and most just disgruntled history you could think of, and coming in, immediately making them a contender, you know, immediately making this team have an identity, we're pounding the ball, we're a smash mouth defense team. That's the identity this team has under Kevin Stefanski. He's clearly in charge of the team. They clearly they clearly buy into his philosophies. And if, if Deshaun Watson can just have a good year, as we've said, the Browns for sure are Super Bowl contenders. You know, Stefanski's doing everything he has to do to be a great coach, to solidify himself. There are just other coaches, I think, that are deserving, as you will see as we get into six through one here that had to be above him. But he's that last guy, you know, right before we kind of get into the S tier of coaches, maybe you could say where he still is an amazing coach and he provides tons of good value for the reasons I just listed. I think he provides such stability for the Browns in a franchise that has been so dysfunctional for a while. And I think him and Andrew Barry are a really good pairing out in Cleveland. I don't necessarily know if the quarterback situation has really been all his fault. I I don't think Deshaun Watson was the player that he was. And with the guaranteed contract, I don't know if he really necessarily has the drive to be that quarterback that they want him to be. Now, with that being said, I do agree that Kevin Stefanski gets his place here, but I do think another guy that needs some, in my opinion, appreciation is Kevin O'Connell in Minnesota. I think what he's been able to do on offense has been pretty crazy, and his decision to hire Brian Flores to to be that D.C., um, and him wanting Kirk back, acknowledging that they can win with Kirk, um, I think it was a big thing too. So I think I think Kevin O'Connell is definitely a top 10 coach if we want to look at the aspect of what he is as a football mind as well. 
No, no, a- absolutely. And you know what? I, he he would have definitely been right there, like teetering on 10. He would have been 11 for me. He's he's right there, though, knocking on the door. I think he just needs a little bit more time than anything else because oh, he yeah, definitely yeah. has already proven that he is going to be a great coach in the league. And, you know, I'm not going to take that away from him. He definitely could have cracked his top 10 for, um, for me, for sure. Moving into number six, Dobbs. People are not going to like this one. Um, y- we have Kyle Shanahan. So this thing is, let's be clear though, Hunter, you know, people aren't going to like it, but people always love to get in their feelings before that they take an objective look at things. Uh, we're not, we don't, we don't, we don't fall victim to that type of behavior over here at YDKB. <laughs> look, call it for what it is, right? So the first two years were not good, right? And again, not, we're not working with a good roster or anything, so I'm not faulting him, but we start off six and 10 and then four and 12. Okay. They bring Jimmy G in and, and, and things are figured out. 13 and three, an amazing season in which they're going to go on to lose the Super Bowl to the Chiefs. Okay. Well, then in 2020, we have another major fall off, but again, because of injuries. But, you know, as I always like to say, I think the the most upper echelon coaches will still make it work to an extent. Six and 10 is rough, right? Like six and 10 is rough. I know they were dealing with a lot of injuries, but as we get into the coaches that are higher on this list, Sometimes they make it work better when they're in situations like that. You know, no spoilers. But then the year after that, okay, 10 and 7, and then 13 and 4, and then 12 and 5, again, with another Super Bowl appearance. But, you know, I think that's kind of just, that is why that Shanahan is not in the top five. Look, obviously Shanahan's a great coach. Obviously he's one of the best, if not the best, offensive mind in all of football, right? But there's more to being a head coach than just that. I think, you know, when you have essentially choked three Super Bowls as the play car, as we've touched on already in, in another video recently, that inherently means something. And, and and I know that he knows it means something, which is why he's so hungry to win a Super Bowl. I do believe Kyle Shanahan will eventually get over that hump, get that monkey off his back and win the Super Bowl. However, as we know, Hunter, he hasn't done it yet. And whenever he gets close, the play calling is, is a shell of what he normally does. And it turns into a travesty. And all that is objectively true. And until that that isn't objectively true anymore, I feel like having him outside the top five is completely understandable because the guys that we have in the top five are all guys that have shown that they can get over that hump. Yes, yes. For if I agree, except for, well, actually, no, that's a lie. Never mind. Um, but yeah, no, I understand what you're saying, Dobbs. And, and I agree. I think the biggest thing that I am going to struggle with, right? Is I, you know, I think the 49ers, because of the talent on the roster, have a runway to win a Super Bowl these next couple years. I do think it's really pressing to try and get one done this year because you don't know, you know, Debo's getting older. Everyone's a year older. You're going to have to pay um, Brock Purdy at some point. And, you know, we talk about Trent Williams getting paid and, or getting older. So it's just one of those things where it's like your best chance to win a Super Bowl is probably this year. And if not this year, then next year. And after that, it's just going to get a little tougher. And I don't know if you're going to have better rosters than you have right now. And you definitely had a better roster than the Chiefs last year. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to who has the better quarterback, I think, for the most part. Um, When you're talking about a Brady or a Mahomes. And, you know... We always talk about, oh, the Shanahan system's so great. The Shanahan system's so great. But in reality, if everything in the system has to go right for it to work, is it really that great of a system? Like the reason they got rid of Jimmy G and they were trying out new quarterbacks and wanted Brock Purdy is because they say that Brock Purdy is like Kyle Shanahan on the field. But it's just like not every quarterback is going to be that. And obviously, you want to find someone to fit your system. That makes a lot of sense. Like, I get that. Obviously, like, Sam Darnold's probably better off in a Shanahan system than he was when he was drafted to the Jets, right? Like, he was more fit for that system. But at the end of the day, if your system consistently cannot get it done, then there's probably a flaw in the system. Absolutely. I I couldn't even say it better myself. That's that's the main reason he's just not in that top five yet, right? No. I, I, I mean, I think... You can make the argument for top five for what they've accomplished, but you can also make the argument that like they have consistently put a very, very good team around him once they built up that roster after he got there. Well, exactly. That's the biggest thing. You're spot on. Moving in to number five, we have Sean Payton of the Denver Broncos. Now, this one is definitely going to cause a little bit 
of an issue, especially because we put him before Kyle Shanahan. But at the end of the day, Dobbs, our main conversation before the show was Peyton has got it done. Well, it's not. It's just, look again. That's another thing I want to bring bring out too is that a lot of people, unfortunately, a lot of NFL fans that are involved in discourse, you know, they get they get stuck a lot, a lot, a lot too much on recency bias, right? When we have a coach like Sean Payton who's had a much longer career than Kyle Shanahan, it's very easy to like just blind out the 10 years of experience he has before Shani and just look at these last five, four or five years, but that's irresponsible to do, right? We have 2006, Sean Payton comes in to post Katrina, New Orleans and lifts the saints to a 10 and six record and says, no, we're not the bottom franchise, bottom feeders. We're, we're, we're a new identity. We're the new Orleans saints. We're going to be something in this league as a saints fan. Like Sean Payton was the guy that like started our era of, of, of having success and sustainability. You can never take that away from him. He's an, he's a culture changer for starters, you know, look, and, 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 and be clear. There are kind of, you could say similarly to Kyle Shanahan, there are like blunder errors or not errors, eras in his coaching career, right? Like immediately after the 10 and six season, seven and nine, and then eight and eight. Okay. But then we go back. Okay. So 2009, right. And then we go Super Bowl champion year, 13 and three. And then the year after that, 11 and five. And then we're 13 and three again in 2011. And then we're 11 5 after the bounty gate because he had to skip a year because of bounty gate. In 2013, 11 5 again. We go on a really rough stretch where it's seven and nine, three years in a row. But that's also when the Saints had statistically the worst defense in the league for three years in a row, which is not necessarily Sean Payton's fault, right? Like he has a hand in that, but he doesn't build the defense. He doesn't pick the defensive coordinator. So I can't sit here and necessarily fault Sean Payton all the way for those years. We finally get a good defense again starting back in 2017. What happens? 11 and 5, 13 and 3, 13 and 3, 12 and 4. And then with Trevor fucking Simeon, we go 9 and 8. And then in 2023, with the Broncos, who had one of the worst rosters in the whole league and have tons of issues and an aging Russell Wilson and just a debacle of a situation, he still found a way to make them go 8 and 9. The bottom line is Sean Payton is a, ter a terrific coach hunter, and people just forget because of recency bias. If you look at the entire timeline and the entire history, uh, especially with the Super Bowl victory, how could you not say Sean Payton's a top five coach in the league, honestly? Well, the reality is, Dobbs, like, looking at what he did with the Broncos last year, like, oh, well, yeah, they got 70 put up on them. Okay, but that Broncos roster had zero business being eight and nine. Zero business being eight and nine. They have, in our opinion, based on our old our last video last week, the worst roster in the NFL. And I'm willing oh, they to do. bet they probably finish around eight and nine again this year. Like they probably finish around five hundred. And this team is in a very early rebuild. It's gonna take a couple years to get there. But in all honesty, that team last year should have had like four or five wins. This year, probably even less, but it won't because of the level of coach that Sean Payton is. No, absolutely. That, it, it, that, I couldn't say any better myself. That's kind of the, that's kind of the whole thing with Sean Payton recently. To the point, hunters, people forget that he has been unfortunately, to no fault of his own, this is this is the reality of coaching. He has been coaching bad teams because the Saints got bad. Not his fault. The Saints got bad. Good players retired. Our our franchise superstar retired. He had to work with what he had to work with, and he still made us go above 500. And then now he's objectively trying to rebuild a bad roster. So people try to pile that on him as if that's his fault. That's why I say I can't stand the recency bias. Moving in to number four, we have Mike Tomlin. Why do we have Mike Tomlin here at four? You know, again, this is going to be more of a polarizing one, but I think people that are being real won't have too much of a problem with this one, right? Yeah, it's a meme. Okay, yeah, ha ha. Oh, another, you know, another uh, a wild card appearance or divisional appearance and then getting knocked out. But as we've said, you know, we reiterate, Hunter, you know, winning in the NFL is, hard. is very hard to do, right? Like winning consistently, winning going all the way is very hard to do. But what do you get in Mike Tomlin? You get a guy that literally refuses to have a losing season. I mean, how could we take a guy 
who hasn't had a losing season in 17 years and say that he's not one of the top five coaches in the entire league. He's also a Super Bowl champion. He's an AFC champion twice. He's lost a Super Bowl. He's won one. The bottom line is that he is one of the top five coaches in the league. I don't care about the memes. I don't care that recently it's been a lot of wild card losses in a row. You, When you have a coach that can consistently get a group of grown men to play at a level where they are going to be playing in the playoffs, that is very hard to do. It is nothing to scoff at. And if you're being objective and not on some troll type behavior, you are for sure going to admit that Mike Tomlin is a top five coach in the league, in my opinion. That's why you can't really ever buy into like the hot seat with Pittsburgh. Like we know Pittsburgh does not make a lot of head coaching changes. And when you have a guy who has never gone under 500, like you are consistently an always relevant franchise. Now, do I necessarily love the decisions he's made with his, you know, offensive coordinator in Matt Canada or, you know, the way they went out and got Kenny Pickett because he's a Pittsburgh kid? Like, while I do think that all comes from upstairs, Mike Tomlin, in my opinion, has a lot of say in terms of how that roster looks because of how respected he is. So some fault has to go to him. But in terms of reality... There would be a lot of co- there would be a lot of teams in the NFL that would fire their head coach right now to have Mike Tomlin be their head coach, and I think that's probably the biggest indicator of how good you are. Like, I can think of probably like twenty nine or twenty eight teams that would fire, and we'll get to him. Probably Sean McVay, or probably fire their coaches to have Sean McVay. Like, Tomlin is that level of coach, and even more storied than McVay because of how long he's been doing it. No, absolutely. Again, Hunter, people just get caught up in the recency bias too much, which is why I'm actually really excited to see the comments on this video. You know, I can't, I want to see who's sticking with, you know, the history and who's just getting sucked in too much to the recency bias. It's going to show it, it, it will show. Moving into number three, we have John Harbaugh, the coach of the Baltimore Ravens. I know there's been kind of some like stick going on here where it's like, you know, he had, Lamar hasn't been able to get it done, and I don't know if that's, you know, because of John Harbaugh or anything like that, but at the end of the day, he won a Super Bowl with Joe Flacco, he's made the Ravens a very successful team for a long time, and I will say this, similar to Tomlin, his willingness to keep Greg Roman on for so long was probably where why he falls a little bit on this list. But he didn't really fall. He's a top three coach in the league. I think the Harbaugh's are just such great coaches. And with what he's been able to do with the Ravens since 2008, there's I don't see any reason why the Ravens would even think about moving on from him. No, absolutely. And look, two losing seasons in 16 years. What is that? One eighth of the time he's going to give you a losing season. Wait, what so was, the, every what eight was years? the losing season? What was the they had one five and 11? Oh, yeah. Eight, nine, eight, nine. My bad. Yeah, they is the other one. But that's the point is even at that at that point, we're teetering on it's you're basically 500, right? So if we're if 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 every eight seasons, you're only going to give me one losing season statistically, how I mean, how are you not a top five coach? The Super Bowl champ with Joe Flacco, they were they were this close this year to very much being in the Super Bowl. A few plays not going their way, a Zay Flowers fumble not bouncing their way. I mean, come on, right? It, it, right. The, the reality is John Harbaugh is a fantastic coach. He is one of the epitomes of a culture guy where this team buys into him. They buy into the culture. They buy into the philosophy of why they're playing football. Those are the most important things. And John Harbaugh has those things. So for, you know, for those reasons, to me, that's why he, that he had to crack the top 300. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess my thing is, okay, let me ask you this. If you're a franchise, right, would you rather have Mike Tomlin or John Harbaugh be your head coach and you have the option to hire both? It's so, dude, it's so tough. I actually don't even know where I would go. I think I would go Tomlin, honestly. Like, I don't know, but all but I right, know is. But right now. If I had a quarterback, though, if I had my quarterback, it's tough. Like, yeah. it, it really makes it a tough question. I, I will say, though, like, right now, I would, right now, Harbaugh, it has the edge on him just because of the recent success, you know? No, right, right. But that's, Move- that's, that's the whole point. Like we were saying earlier, you know, you can't get, it's, it, like we know, you can't, you cannot get caught up in the recency bias because recency sometimes it's a liar long term, right? Right. Moving in to number two, we talked about him a little bit already. Sean McVay, the Los Angeles Rams. 
as a football mind, as a motivator, as a culture guy, McVay just seems like he has everything. And the fact that no matter what the roster looks like in Los Angeles, it always seems like the Rams are a competitive team, I think should tell you everything you need to know, especially already having two Super Bowl appearances and having one Super Bowl ring. Oh, I mean, yeah, and, and again, like we just, you know, you look at the track record since he came in the league. If it, if literally, if at age 31, you can go 11 and five and completely turn around the team's culture and then go 13 and three at age 32 and be this close to bringing home your first Super Bowl at, at age 32, when you're, you're younger than, uh, you know, a third of the players on the entire roster. And then again, this is, okay, so nine and seven, a bit of a downturn. And then 2020, 10 and six. But then 2021 was his magnum opus, however you say it. I think that's how you say it. Right? He finally brought it home. He showed that I'm not only a great coach, I am a legendary coach. I am a Super Bowl coach. I am going to be a good coach for a long time. Then a little bit of a lower question mark here at 2022. He goes 5-12. and 12. The retirement rumors start to happen. But again, I think you could kind of just attribute that back to the age. Like, okay, he's... He's already won a Super Bowl and lost a Super Bowl before most people even get an opportunity to be a, a college head coach, let alone an NFL head coach. I think he had to take a step back, you know, kind of really realize why he's doing this, why he wants to keep doing it, like he said himself in the interviews. Took that step back, came back this year, went 10 and 7 with a pretty mediocre Rams roster. And that's what makes him a special coach is that he is now proven on top of everything he already proved to us before, Hunter, that even when he doesn't have the amazing roster and the Hall of Fame talent all over the board, he still can make this team a productive Super Bowl contending team. For all those reasons, I think we had to have him safely at number two on the list. I mean, personally, if I was starting an NFL franchise and I got to pick any coach in the league, I would pick Sean McVay. I don't think it's a question. I think because of his age and because of how good he's been and because of what he's able to do with his players, McVay could be your coach for the next 30 years, and that is something I would heavily bank on. Um, I think the Rams, once they figure out their next quarterback after Stafford goes, they're, they could be very, very scary, and maybe we're talking... I mean, I don't want to say it too early because I don't know, but like I could see them being a dynasty because of how good McVay is and if they get the right quarterback in that system. It could be like another oh, Mahomes. Oh, for sure. I was going to say... Pairing. like. You could see, I mean, it's funny that it's funny that the, the one time it should have happened, it didn't. Yeah. In a sense, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Even though the Bengals earned that appearance, like Ryan, the Bengals earned that appearance, I'm not taking away from them. But it really almost, you know, it very well could have been the Chiefs Rams then. I think we could be seeing a fair amount of Chiefs Rams in the future going forward. Oh, 100%. Well, talking about the Chiefs, so let's go into number one. No surprise. Dave Canales is number one. No, Andy Reid is number one. Um, I mean, is there really much to say? He has been consistently the best head coach in football over the last, what, five, six, seven years? Yeah, and even you can even go back to the Eagles days, and, and it was like, man, all Andy Reid was missing back in the Eagles days was truly an all-pro quarterback, right? I mean, he was so close. The Super Bowl lost back in 2004. I mean, let's just... Let's just put in perspective how many seasons Andy Reid has with 11 or more wins, right? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 seasons of 11 or more wins in a 25 year career. That is the epitome of dominance as a coach. 258, 144 career record. I mean, what the three-time Super Bowl champ, right? He He's been an NFC champ and an AFC champ. He's done it in both conferences. There is a 0% chance you could argue that Andy Reid is not the best coach. And you paired the best coach with the best quarterback. So there's not any really, there's not even any reason to understand. It, it's not hard to understand is what I'm trying to say, why the Chiefs are so good. They have the best coach. They have the best quarterback. They have a special combination. That's really all you can say. I do think it is possible that he retires with more rings than Belichick. And I think if See, that I'll say happens, this. we have a lot. I don't know if he has that much left in the tank. I really don't. But if he coaches till he's like 80, it is possible. I, well, he's only, he's only uh, 64, I think. 
66 right now. So 66. 66. 66. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was wrong. But yeah, he hasn't had less than a... The last time he had less than 10 wins in a season was 2014. That's 10 years ago. So it's just like... And you can see like... If you look at the talent on the Chiefs offense, it's not it's not what McVay has or has had. Well, it, at points it did. Kelsey and Tyreek and everything like that. But like recently, recently, these last two Super Bowls, what he's been able to do with that offense has been insane. Oh no, he he is truly like hit the pinnacle of like football mind uh, as far as offense goes. Like he's in a a masterclass realm. We're sitting in a room with Andy Reid and talking football to most people would sound like listening to an alien invasion because of just how deep that it would go with him. Yeah. He he's truly a mastermind of football. And that's why to nobody's surprise, like we said, we had to have him at number one here, Hunter. It, 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 just, it just can't be argued at this point in time. Any last thoughts? You know, I'll say, how about this for last thoughts? There are a bunch of good coaches in the league. Like, like even like Kevin Stefanski, in my case, it was really hard to leave some of these guys off. We're in a great era of coaches. D'Amico, Ryan, I mean, there's a lot of guys that I really wanted to sneak on this list that I just couldn't. It is a very bright era for the NFL as far as coaching goes. Thank you guys so much for watching. We are talking, uh, we were talking about the top 10 coaches in the league, ranking them all. If you don't know ball and want to know ball, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, let us know in the comments who you think the best coach in the league is. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.